DMEC in complicated eyes is an endlessly fascinating topic for me. And one of the most common complicated situations that we encounter is eyes with corneal endothelial decompensation in the context of an ACIOL. These are eyes that have often had some prior bad thing happen to them, perhaps complicated cataract surgery with vitreous loss and some problem with the lens. And so these eyes present in unusual situations with sort of a bad predisposing setup. DMEC can be done in these eyes, and it can be tricky because these eyes are often post-vitrectomy, and the anterior chamber is abnormal. You would think that with this ACIOL jammed up in front of the iris, the chamber would be shallow, but in fact, quite the opposite. Usually, these are hyper-deep anterior chambers because the eye is post-vitrectomy, and the ACIOL sitting on top of the iris holds the iris down and back. And so these are functionally unicameral eyes with impossible to shallow anterior chambers. And how to perform DMAC in an eye, which is functionally unicameral and impossible to shallow the anterior chamber, is sort of an interesting question. We do these operations all the time, and I wanted to show a video just from a couple of days ago. Uh, this is the fast forward through to the good part. This is the DMAC graft unfolding. We're injecting the graft here through a 2.4 millimeter wound in a clear cornea, and it injects into the eye. You'll notice it is peeking out a bit through the main wound, the graft, just because the graft is so large. I like to use a large graft here because the larger the graft, the more pinning and apposition you get. So I push the, uh, the graft back in and remove the air bubble. The graft appears to be upside down to here, so I'm flipping it. And the way you flip the graft reliably and reproducibly is you inject BSS perpendicular to the lie of the graft. So if the graft is here, you inject BSS there while depressing the main wound. And that creates an eddy current that flips the graft over very reliably and reproducibly. Now you'll notice this patient is under topical anesthesia. So the eye is moving around a little bit. Here, I've, now that I've flipped the graft over, I'm just removing that last little air bubble, which would compete with me for control over the graft. And now that the graft is right side up, the task now is how to unfold it. So I'm nudging the graft a bit towards the center of the eye, and I'm using a cannula there to try to access the edge of the tissue. Now you'll notice a trick here, which is very reliable and reproducible. And that's why I wanna show this video. I'm gonna use a coaxial forcep in one hand to grab the edge of the graft and hold it to facilitate unfolding. So I'm using a cannula here just to push the edge of the graft open, to sort of prop it open such that I can grab it with this coaxial gripping forcep. And it takes a little bit of maneuvering and fiddling in order to pinch the edge of the graft, but that's fine. We're not in any hurry. This is not a rush. We have all the time in the world we need to unfold this graft. People are worried about losing the stain or the, uh, sort of get nervous or uncomfortable, but it, it's okay. Just take your time more or less and it's going to be fine. So once we get the edge of that graft pinched in our coaxial force up there, with a few taps on the surface of the cornea, you can just get the rest of the graft to open up. And the trick here is as you're tapping and moving, you sort of drag the graft over with the forcep. Do you notice that I drag the graft one way while tapping in the other direction with the cannula? So now the graft is totally unfolded there, up against the back of the cornea. There are these little lingering edges, which more or less have to be ironed out, but that's fine. You can do that once the graft is lifted safely and securely on top of the air bubble, or under, uh, yeah, on top of the air bubble. So now we just use a cannula with air to inflate the anterior chamber. Now here, you'll notice I place one bubble centrally underneath the graft. And then once it's lifted, you can place some taps on the surface of the cornea to unfold those little lingering edges and then to center the tissue if needed. So the reason I show this unedited video here is to demonstrate how easy it is to unfold a DMET graft with a minimum 
of just random taps on the surface of the cornea or random injections of fluid. Here's another little trick, by the way. You'll notice I'm inflating the anterior chamber with air. So the goal is I want to pump up the, the anterior chamber with air, but not pressurize the eye. Because you'll notice there, did you notice that when I just put an extra aliquot of air into the anterior chamber, actually the bubble shrank? And the reason that that occurred is because this is a soft, hypotenus, unicameral eye. So if you overinflate the anterior chamber with air, what happens is the air bubble misdirects behind the iris. So air goes behind the iris, the eye becomes rock hard, the chamber shallows, and the air fill in the anterior chamber shrinks. The bubble size decreases as you inject air into the anterior chamber. The way to prevent that is you inflate these eyes. First, you fill the anterior chamber with air, not to pressurize the eye, but just to occupy the space. And once the AC is filled with air, you pressurize the globe by injecting BSS with a 30 gauge half inch needle into the pars plana. That's what I'm doing now. So that syringe with a 30 gauge sharp uh, needle is being used to inject BSS to pressurize the posterior segment. And once the posterior segment is pressurized and filled with BSS, then you can put more air in the anterior chamber and that pressurizes and sticks the graft up against the back of the cornea. And that way you won't lose air back into the posterior segment of the eye. So that is another really, really useful trick that we have observed. But I show this video because these eyes are so common, I think, nowadays in cornea practices. ACIOLs are still used. They're still seen all the time. And I think you hate to have some poor soul who had some unfortunate, complicated surgery in their past and then add insult to injury by doing an endothelial graft that is not the very best variety. In other words, to do a DSEC instead of a DMEC. DSEC confers no advantages in these cases. It simply makes the surgery technically easier for the, for the surgeon to perform, but you don't need a shortcut like that. DMEC is perfectly easy enough. It's predictable and reliable, and frankly, it's more fun to do a little bit of a challenging procedure in a more complicated eyes. The patients appreciate it more, and I think more importantly, actually, you will enjoy it more as a surgeon. The key concept, basically, is in an eye that you can't shallow the chamber, you have to have some other way to unfold the graft. When you have a hyper deep chamber, that way to unfold the graft is by grabbing the graft with forceps, dragging it in one direction physically with applying opposing taps on the surface of the cornea. Give it a shot.